there's a lot of definitions of what bodybuilding is because it's so many things to so many people. There's too many different meanings. So really, if you ask 100 people what it means to them, you could potentially get 100 different answers because there's no cookie cutter here. <laughs> it's an art. Bodybuilding, in my eyes, is a reflection of how we live our lives. I mean, all of us are bodybuilding. Some of us, it just doesn't look good. Brace everything to the surface. There you go. Oh my God. Okay, so I can look at it as, as, as trying to create a Picasso, a Van Gogh. Some people, it's just, you know, blood and guts. It's Dorian Yates' motto. It's blood and guts. Like, he would die for it. And if you watch his training style, you can see the very few people can train the way he did, which is why there's very few people that were able to rival him. Ronnie Coleman. I think when you do a survey over what the great bodybuilders all have in common, I think we all know as individuals that there's nobody that's going to do it for us. I never even thought I was going to get into bodybuilding and into the sport. So we did grow up with my dad would be like, okay, we're going to go out for a jog. And I hated it, a four mile jog. I'm totally not into that. <laughs> I'm about the only one in the family who's quite different. I'm more laid back, you know, I hated that. Tony didn't like it either in the beginning, but actually he learned something from it. As you see, he, he also loves using and pushing his physical body. I fell in love with the sport. It filled a void of competition. You know, what I loved about bodybuilding, you know, because when I think about it from the surface, it's very egotistical, I guess. You know, there's a bunch of people, they just want to do it just for the physical, just to look good. Just maybe, maybe they had little man syndrome <laughs> when they were young, or maybe it was just about girls. Like they get into it many for the wrong reasons. And sometimes they go down a dark path in the sport. There's been many people in the sport that have died. Um, so there's a, there, there's some people that are like, it's a negative sport, it's not that good. But for others, it is a positive sport. It is a way to release some of that anxiety, get into the gym, have fun with the people you care about, and truly get better and progress. And what I love about the sport, this is the deep part I love that you could work for six months straight, eating strategically, week in, week out, having a plan, trying to shape a muscle this way, shape a muscle that way, grow a muscle this way, and go at it for six months straight, all to get on a stage for five minutes. You don't have a shield of armor. There's nowhere to hide. You have a tiny piece of cloth that separates you from the audience. And everything else is gonna be, what did you do this off season? What did you do with your summer? What have you been doing in your contest prep? And, and the only answer you have for it is to make sure that you're prepared. Sometimes I'm selfish, get jealous. I feel a little helpless. My whole world has shifted again. You made a promise, I kept it. Now I'm second guessing. My whole world has shifted again. Now I drive back to an empty home, and it's sad. Things are gone. 
think what I loved about it is you can't hide the results. So going back to what my dad did with the results, you get rewarded for what you put in. And I love the fact that you can't hide. You're out there in basically underwear. <laughs> the whole crowd, thousands of people are seeing what real work did you put in? You can't fool people. It's either you ate right, you lifted your ass off, you did your cardio, you stayed disciplined, or you didn't. And they can see it. So I love that concept. And I think if you can take that positive, deciphered message from bodybuilding and put that into business or anything you do, you can be absolutely phenomenal at it. Um, so it was a void that then was filled to get my competition juices flowing once again. We're at a point in bodybuilding where five years ago I made the comment, it's on record, that classic physique would be something that we're talking about more than bodybuilding. So when I see these young guys come along and they're doing the business of bodybuilding, my trained eye has gone towards the classic physique division because these guys are paying attention to detail. Some people show true presence on stage. They, they aren't in their mind. They're looking out their eyes. They're, they're not managing themselves with stiffness and rigidity. They're fluid and, and, and they're, they're liquid. And in a way that's not passive, but alive. And I love it when they reference the old school bodybuilders and my name is amongst them because it tells me that the work I did in the 80s and the 90s and the turn of 2000 left an impression on them the same way that the work that Frank Zane did, Mohammed McAway, uh, Samir Banu. These guys were impressionable athletes before I ever hit the scene in bodybuilding that I actually had the opportunity to come to know in late, the later years, but I always paid homage to those physiques. And so to hear the new guys talk about myself or some of the other OGs, uh, it, it tells us that what we did mattered and it counted. And now it's more relevant today than it ever was because bodybuilding is no longer what it once was. And uh, it seems like a very participatory sport. Anybody can get big. So anybody can compete, but back then we were elite. I can appreciate the classic physique guys. Not only that, but they look back to the OGs in order to see where they're gonna go. And that division is still on the rise. Athletes like Tony and Terrence Ruffin and Chris Bumstead and Brian Ansley, they respect and pay homage to the guys that laid the foundation for where they're at because we paved the way for them. There was a, a, a top veteran of the sport who runs a bunch of shows in the, in the fitness world that came up to me backstage, actually, when, when I was backstage at my first show. And I just got off the stage and he comes back and he runs back there and I didn't really know who he was. He's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm Ed Pariso. I, I, I run all of Texas bodybuilding shows. And he comes back there and this is my first show. So I have no clue who this is. He's like, I'm the president of the NPC. And he's like, man, I see greatness in you. Like, I see you could be a star. What you did out there for your first time was incredible. And he said, you stick with this, you're gonna go far in the sport. So it's like, if he didn't say that to me, would it have clicked? I don't know. Come on, motherfuckers! Come on, Rayshon! Oh, shit! Come on, Rayshon! <laughs> You look like the best in the world. You look like the best. Hey, you look like the best in the fucking world, dude. Ah, that looked fucking good. God damn, your boy been. That looked fucking.